Thank you, Senator Schatz. Thank you, Chair, Ranking Member. Thank you, Secretary. Um, first, I want to talk to you about housing. Um, and uh, if you'll permit me a wind up here, um, this is one of the only areas where the government creates a shortage and then sort of strokes its chin, wondering why there's not more of the thing that we all say we want. But it really is uh, restrictive zoning, covenants, minimum lot size, parking requirements, and all of that that has contributed mightily to our housing shortage. And as a chair of transportation and HUD, I want to fund all the programs. But the truth is, there's not enough federal funding in the world to deal with the throughput problem of states and counties making it almost impossible to build the thing that we say we all want. And I think you have some pretty good news to report in the Commerce Department along those lines to try to make sure that when we think about economic development in a region, that housing is integral to a place um, thriving or in some instances recovering. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about what you're doing to kind of infuse a housing uh, thought process into your economic development strategies. Actually, that's a perfect way to say it. Um, and as I have said to you, your, you have helped us to focus on the issue, uh, and I appreciate that. To that end, with EDA, for example, now as a new matter of practice, when we are putting on our applications to applicants for local economic development, we are proactively asking them for the first time to show us what are their plans for housing. How would they you know, think about using our grant for this economic development in a way that stimulates housing? The same thing with CHIPS, the CHIPS applicants. I was recently out in Arizona. I mean, the, it's exciting because the amount of jobs we're gonna be creating are tens upon tens of thousands but we're asking the companies, how are you thinking about housing? Asking the governors and mayors, how are you thinking about housing? So I think it's very much what you just said. You know, look, f for what it's worth, I, as a governor, I lived the local challenges, and it's, it is exactly as you say. And a lot of those fights, if you will, have to, whether it's zoning or permitting or density requirements, are done on a local level. But anyway, we are, considering policies that expand housing supply in everything that we do at EDA, and I think that's a great step forward. It's great, and it's, it's so logical that it seems like something that should have been done a long time ago. You can't have economic development without housing supply for the workers. If you're imagining an area expanding, it doesn't happen organically. It has to be planned and permitted and financed and then constructed and then plugged into a grid and all the rest of it. So thank you for doing that. Please do as much uh, as you can. Um, uh, uh, in this area and, and we'll support you. Um, on a sort of less of a love fest uh, question here. Um, the, the NOAA budget, as it's proposed by the president, does a fair amount of damage to oceans here. And um, a 45% cut to NOAA's ocean exploration program a 42% cut to NOAA's coral program, a 10.3% cut to Sea Grant, uh, and zeroing out Senator Shaheen and White House's National Ocean Security Fund. And I'm just, I'm trying to make sense of this because I understand the constraints of the FRA, but these are disproportionate cuts in the ocean space and I'm wondering what the theory of the case is here. Um, the theory of the case is, <laughs> I think those cuts stink, to be candid, uh, but it's a really tough top line that we've had, so we had to go through it and say, what must we fund? And we chose to prioritize the weather satellites, which are quite expensive, um, $334 million additional for weather satellites, to bring it to a total of $2 billion because we know that our weather predictions are a matter of life and death, quite literally. Uh, I will say, you know, look, I come from the Ocean State. These are tough cuts. We have, we, I've directed the department wherever possible to use um, infrastructure law monies and uh, IRA monies to make up for these shortages would work with you or Senator Shaheen, Senator Whitehouse, to try to do our best to be creative. 
but in the face of difficult choices, that's how we chose to prioritize.